Hi, would you like to see how a radio dog fence works and how a pet barrier can be used to help stop your dog escaping and digging in the garden beds? My name's Colin and I'm from the Dog Line. Right now you're about to meet Tyson and you can see how we laid out the wire to help stop him digging in the gardens. What this video is about is to show you how a radio dog fence works and to show you the five key points that we looked at when uh, putting this package together. Now using our transmitters and our receiver collars, we've got about 20 different combinations to make sure we get the right system for the property and the right uh, collar for the dog. And in our installation guide, we've got five different designs to help you get the right layout for the property. And of course, we have our seven day helpline, 1300 the dog, uh, which is 1300 843 364, if you need help at any stage. If you'd like to see the next video which shows us installing Tyson's dog fence and laying out the wire to stop him from getting in the garden beds and also see us installing on other properties where we just put the wire on the fence, it doesn't have to be buried, then you could fill in the form below which gets you to your free pet barrier buying guide um, and then you'll be taken through to a page where that video is located. You could click on the big red button for your quote. If you'd like to get some details on pricing, tell us a little bit about your dog, tell us about your property and what's been happening and we'll design a kit specifically for your property um, or you could call us on our seven day helpline which is 1300 the dog that's 1300 843 364 and we can have a chat over the phone and give you some more details that way so let's go and meet Tyson and have a look at the um, garden beds we've been able to save hi this is Colin from the dog line this is my buddy Tyson Tyson's favourite toy is reticulation and his favourite hobby is digging up garden beds. As you can see by these garden beds, he doesn't get into them at all anymore. Three months ago, we installed these, uh, our radio dog fence, our pet barrier, around this property to keep him from uh, destroying the garden beds and it's worked a treat. They didn't always look like this. The tricky thing here was we needed Tyson to be able to go down this, these steps across to his kennel in the background which is between the window garden bed and the garden bed that runs along here and later on we're going to tell you how you can uh, go through to the next video which will show you us installing this and how to set everything up to make it really nice and easy the gardens will look a bit different to this this is our after photos come here Tyson come on you're good looking these are our after photos. So three months ago, there was tape to keep these garden beds protected and nothing was working. One of Sue's comments was that if she'd known how well it had worked before, she would have done it a long time ago. So these garden beds are looking great now and Tyson can still go up and down these stairs. Hi, Tyson and I have just popped over here to show you how the radio signal is created and uh, what's included in, in the kit and the five things that we looked for in a good radio dog fence. This garden bed in front of me is completely protected from Tyson going in and doing his favourite trick and also the garden bed behind me. But the tricky thing is we've uh, had to allow Tyson to get down this path and down that footpath you saw earlier um, in order to get to his kennel. And I'll explain a little bit about how we do that on this whiteboard. Now just quickly, we've designed the groundskeeper pet barrier to do uh, properties up to an acre, including half acre, 1200 square meter blocks and intricate garden bed designs. Most systems will do up to five acres. What we found previously before we swapped over to the, our pet barrier is that if you get a transmitter that will do a five acre property, it's producing this much radio signal. If you try and compress that down onto a half an acre property or a one acre property, you, the radio signal can potentially jump around and cause problems around the house, which is called signal coupling, where the radio signal will couple onto something else foreign that's not meant to, where the ra radio signal's not meant to be. Um, and also phantom loops, where it can jump into stray areas, including inside the house, and give the dog false corrections where he's not meant to. So the groundskeeper pet barrier, because it's designed to do intricate, smaller garden bed designs, doesn't stop, stops that from happening. The other reason we can do that because of the circuit board and also the coded digital FM frequency. But we'll talk about that in a little while. Now, 
If you fill in the forms below, as we've already said, you'll see what this property used to look like before we installed the pet barrier and they did a little bit of gardening. But they wasted a lot of money before they actually got the pet barrier with um, uh, trying to put barricades up and keeping Tyson out, but he just enjoyed himself even more. Anyway, let's have a look at how these systems work and how the radio signal is created. If, if you've got a transmitter in the kit and that sits on the wall, that's powered by a transformer. So the transmitter is like a radio. If you thought about a CB radio or a two-way radio, it's projecting a radio signal up an aerial, and that's projecting forever. Now, if you think about the wire that goes around the property, either at the top of the fence or across the gardens as the aerial, what's happening is the radio signal travels up the wire or the aerial, goes around the property, under the driveway, and by the way, with our wire, you don't have to bury it. Uh, the coating allows us to leave it sitting on top of the fence um, or just laying on top of the garden or being a little bit of mulch over the top. It's very flexible. Um, then you continue around the property and you must return back to the transmitter to create the radio signal. So when the signal, sorry Tyson, when the signal travels around the property and gets back to the transmitter, the transmitter's job is to block the radio signal and create pressure. When you turn up the range control, the volume or the pressure, you push the radio signal out from the wire. So you'll end up with a wire with a radio signal emanating from the wire, which has two sections. The first section is called the warning zone, which is the first 10% of the radio signal and the inner section is called the correction zone, which is what creates the little correction for the collar. We'll talk about programmable collars and correction levels and how we can make it very easy to help the dog make their own decision not to go into the garden beds or jump the fence. So the other thing we've been able to do here, you'll notice that there's two wires running from your shed or your garage where the radio transmitter and the transformer need to be. The dog can walk across these two wires because the radio signal is heading around the property in one direction. Now when it's heading north from the shed to the fence and then comes around and ahead south from the fence back to the shed, that neutralizes the radio signal, which is one reason why Tyson can sit here and can also go down those, uh, that, those stairs we just saw in the previous section. If we run the wire along this garden bed and then uh, underneath the footpath and then around this garden bed and then back again and around this garden bed, then down here, this is the side of the house. I'm sitting here right now with Tyson. We also have a garden bed that's coming around here. We've now got a radio signal that travels along this garden bed, this garden bed, and around here. But Tyson still needs to be able to go along this area and down those stairs because his kennel is just here. And we've been able to do that because we can manipulate the depth of the radio signal using the fine-tuned transmitter and the position of the wire. Um, I'll just do one more quick one. If the two wires are running 30 centimetres apart, that will only allow the radio signal to project 30 centimetres this side and 30 centimetres that side. Close them together, you get no radio signal. Open them up, you get a very slight signal and that will restrict the depth of the signal, uh, which is kind of rough guide, but it certainly does work very well with the smaller transmitter. Now let's go and have a look at the five components that go into making up the radio fence. Number one is the transformer that plugs into the power point. Number two is the transmitter that sits in the sh in the, on the wall. Number three is the radio frequency which comes out of the radio transmitter. Number four is the wire. And number five, of course, is the collar the dog wears. Okay, let's go and have a look at those each of those parts and, and what makes up a good radio fence. That's our information about the pet barrier dog fence. Um, if you fill in the form below, you can get your free buying guide uh, and then go through and see the video on how we actually install them and fit them together. If you want to get a quote, we can design a system for your dog and your property. Just fill in the quote, click on the button to fill in the quote form or click on the product you could go through and purchase or give us a call. Just remember we do have a seven day helpline which is 1300 the dog.
That's 1300 843 364. You can uh, call that at any time to chat about your dog, your property, and we'll design a kit for you. Tyson's been such a good boy today. We've got a little gift hamper for him with a few bones and treats. You'll see those on our website as well. Thanks for joining us, and here's to well-contained dogs in every neighborhood. Cheers.